What's up guys, welcome to ASAP Automotive Channel and today we're back at it with another how to's with Mike and we're gonna be showing you how to replace a TPS sensor. So like I said, we're back at it with another how-to with Mike, and today we're back working on the Tahoe again. At 200,000 miles, you're gonna have a few issues. So one of the issues I'm having is uh, this thing's liking, liking to upshift a little too quick, um, and a few other different issues that have been bugging me. And I've known I've had this issue for a while, I've just been too busy to be honest to get to it because we've been wide open in the shop. It's a problem cool having. Um, but long story short, I need to replace the TPS sensor. What's a TPS sensor? A TPS sensor stands for Throttle Position Sensor. And in a computer controlled vehicle, and actually some old Quadrajet setup, the late Quadrajet that had half computer on them, actually has, it has a sensor on it that tells the computer where the throttle is at. Hence, Throttle Position Sensor. So, um, wanted to make a quick little video for you guys this will cover a lot of vehicles, kind of like some of the other stuff we're covering. You know, specifically, we're dealing with my 99 Tahoe here with the 5.7 uh, Vortec in it. Um, and pretty much any of these Vortecs are the same. But basically, most any of these serviceable TPS sensors are going to be about the same. You're typically going to have a three-wire connector, and you're going to have two, maybe three bolts holding it down. Your application might have some Phillips head screws, or it might be like ours that are like a Torx bit, which I think is like a, I don't know, maybe a T20 or T15, something like that. Um, but it's the same basic idea. And it normally always goes here on the side of the wherever the throttle plate is, and it goes slides right over the end of the throttle shaft, and that's how it moves and tells you where it's at. To give you a better view, here's what we're working with. The end of the throttle shaft looks, it's rounded and it's got a flat spot in it. It goes in there and it pivots back and forth. And the best way I can explain this to you guys, if you ever grew up with like little slot car tracks, uh, you know, you squeeze the trigger, the car goes faster. What that is, is a varying resistor, um, varying amounts of resistance. So same thing in here. It's just got a half or a little arc of a sweep. And as it goes across, or as you push the pedal further over, the resistance drops, so more voltage is able to go through. Um, and what that allows is typically at, at idle, these things are around about a half a volt, 0.4 volts, somewhere in there. Different vehicles have different minimums and specs, um, but a general rule of thumb is about a half a volt, 0.4. At wide open throttle, you can have anywhere from about 4.5 volts to almost 5 volts. Uh, and in between there, if you and, and really the only way you can really diagnose one of these things uh, is honestly is with a good scan tool that you can actually go in and watch the live data and do a sweep on the throttle. And what that means is preferably while the engine's off so you don't blow it up, is get in there with your scan tool, pull it up, pull up throttle position uh, percentage is typically what you normally have a PID, uh, a parameter information display of voltage and then you'll have one of in a percentage value and what you can do is pull both those up in a graph form and as you press that throttle you should see as you evenly press it all the way to the floor you should see a nice even sweep do you see any little deviations or dropouts in it that could be causing a major issue because all of a sudden for a split second there the computer doesn't know where the hell the throttle is uh, and it uses a sensor for a lot of different things uh, if you have an automatic transmission a lot of your shift parameters are based off of this uh, among many other sensors but predominantly off your throttle position and how it calculates a lot of other things so this is a very important sensor so why are you watching this video either you're just a an awesome subscriber and ours you just love watching our videos we love you guys um, or you know maybe you went somewhere and found out and they diagnosed it, hey you need a throttle position sensor they gave you a price you're like oh my god that's expensive which it could be um, and you just maybe you just want to do it yourself um, or maybe you, you have had a diagnosis you know, or maybe you were able to diagnose it yourself and you've never replaced one. So anyways, we're going to kind of walk you through. Like I said, this is a really general guide. We're using mine as an example. You guys are on your own. You know, we got the whole disclaimer, all that crap and illegal stuff. So do anything stupid, screw it up. It's on your own. Anyways, 
the first thing you want to do is anytime you're messing with really with anything with your vehicle, especially electronics, disconnect the negative cable. And that's the first thing we're going to do. Now, basically, you've got two different types of posts on a battery. Either um, you either got like a bolt-on style like this, or you've got an actual post, which is a round post on here. Um, it could be on the side, could be on the top, yada yada. Your battery might be in the back, under the back seat, could be there. Mine's out here in the front. So if you're gonna be doing this, make sure you find out where your particular, your where your battery is for your particular vehicle and make sure you disconnect this because you don't wanna go unplug and stuff like that. You can actually set off a code. Some computers will actually still monitor stuff even though the key is off. So even though you think, oh, the key's off, it's not gonna hurt anything, you go plug in like mass airflow sensor, TPS sensor or whatever, you can actually end up setting a code and you end up with a check engine light and you can end up chasing a wild goose when all you did was you just disconnected something when you shouldn't. So that being said, let's go ahead and get this thing disconnected. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, we got our battery disconnected. We're gonna come over here and actually unplug the sensor and just kind of be gentle with it after 20 years and 200,000 miles can be a little bitter so this is a good time to go ahead and look at your connections these these look really good there's no corrosion no damage or anything like that the wires going into them look all good there's no fraying or anything pulled and and another little tip guys anytime you're disconnecting something never ever ever under any circumstances pull on the freaking wires i see so much crap in here where people have messed with stuff and not just individuals but like shops go in like they're they're pulling on the wires, pulling something off, and you never do that. Always grab the connector by the body and pull it off because you've been amazed that you might not think you damaged it, but you can actually end up breaking a wire internally and stretching it and losing connections, and then you're chasing a really fun problem that's a real pain to diagnose. Anyways, don't be stupid. Don't pull on it. So, got that out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the idle air control solenoid back here so I can really get stuff out of the way, and I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this high pressure switch off the AC. So we really got some room here and we're gonna go ahead and get these Torx bit or Torx screws off of here. And we can go ahead and slide this bad boy off. All right, cool. All right guys, if you'll notice here, this is actually the original one. It's still got some of the actual GM markings on it. You can see the AC Delco and all. Uh, and that's actually what we're putting back on here is an actual AC Delco professional series. I'll show you the guys uh, the part number in just a second. But if you look here closely, notice how this one's all nice and centered here in the body. Um, and over time, mine is worn and see how you got that gap, that like crescent gap here on that side in between that metal flange in the center. This is how much that thing is worn um, out over time. And you think of how many times that throttle is actuated um, over 200,000 miles um, it's just going to wear out, you know, you get a vehicle this age of mileage, it's going to happen. So it doesn't matter what brand it is. Um, which I was joking with my dad the other day, you would think this thing would be wore out at like the wide open throttle position, you know, where it spends most of its time, but not that I drive like that. Um, another quick tip guys. Um, so this one's, you know, we're working on a GM vehicle here and really any of these Vortec engines, whether it's the 4.3, the 5.0 or the 5.7 are all going to be pretty much the same thing. Um, pretty much same looking throttle body, all that stuff. They, they share the same architecture like we've talked about before. Now, some of the older sensors, and I've seen a few of the fairly newer ones, I'm saying like mid 2000s, late 2000s. These holes where the screws are can actually be slotted so you actually rotate this thing in. Now, if yours has the slotted or the, the slots on them, um, be careful because that means this thing needs to be calibrated uh, and set at a certain voltage. Uh, a lot of the older Fords were that way. And these things are crucial for shift patterns in some of those old Fords, like with the E4OD and stuff like that transmission. Um, so if you see one that's slotted, if you don't have a scan tool or a way to get in there and look at the live data and see where it's at at idle or know how to look up the specs on it, you might be better off going to a professional or a shop and letting them do it. We'd gladly take care of it here for you in the shop um, if you're in the South Carolina area. Um, but that being said, um, you know, Ford was the one that used it for a long time, uh, 80s, 90s, and I think into the 2000s. Um, um, just be careful, guys. Um, but if they're just a straight screw like this, you're normally pretty good. There's no real adjustment, and you just got to make sure you line up that bevel part with that right there, or throttles in the rest position. So now that being said, you know, um, let it 
let it just kind of fall on there. Let it find its spot. Like if you'll notice right here, I just set it on there, but my screw holes don't line up. So don't go trying to jam this thing on by, you know, and you know, thinking you're lining it up. It's okay, because if you'll notice, let me show you guys here real quick. This thing's got a little tip right here, and that's gonna fit right in there. So we're gonna slide it on just enough. We're just gonna find it, let it find itself, and then come and clock it back a little bit, and then slide it on the rest of the way. If you don't pay attention to that, you're gonna end up breaking the sensor really quick, and you gotta buy a new one, and that sucks. So we got our screws out already, you know, we already changed this out. And by the way, these guys, my particular application, this was a, um, yeah, a T20 Torx. Um, you can find any good Torx bit set at, you know, any parts store or, you know, Harbor Freight, anything like that. They're pretty cheap. So um, one thing you might want to do while you're pulling these screws out so you don't drop them is get you a magnet down in there alongside you. Um, otherwise, you might be making a trip to the salvage yard if you drop it down in somewhere and you can't find it. Um, but that's another good tool to always have on hand around stuff like this. I like to go ahead and start the screw on there and hold the socket and then come down here and start it in that way and just start it in by hand. And I normally go ahead and run it down and then I just come back with a ratchet and just kind of snug it. Remember, it's just plastic and aluminum. I mean, just barely snug is all you got to do. You don't want it coming loose, but you don't want to heat man it because you'll easily break it. All right, guys, so the next thing we're gonna do, we got our screws in there, we got them snugged down. Like I said, remember, don't over tighten them. Um, next thing we do is plug stuff back up. Now, if you, keen eye will notice here, I got two problems. One being that, hey, this one's jacked up. This little seal around here for this Delphi connector is rolled over. And somebody unplugged it and didn't pay attention where they plugged it back in and rolled it up. That's not gonna seal properly and, um, it's gonna allow water and stuff to get in there in that connector and that's not gonna be good. But I mean worse off on my throttle position sensor. I ain't got no seal. There's supposed to be a rubber seal around there that actually looks something like this, but you know, round. So looks like I'm gonna be making a trip out to the salvage yard and go ahead and get me a couple of these seals. Um, and like I said, you know, these this is what, 96 to, God, I think they carried it in the vans to like 05. So any of those, seals around there would work so I'll, next time I'm out in the salvage yard I'll go ahead and pick a couple up but you always want to make sure those are in good condition also and the way they should be that being said let's go ahead and plug this stuff back up and we got our idle air control plugged back in TPS plugged back in and then our high pressure switch here on the AC plug that back in and now we can go ahead and plug our or reconnect our negative cable on the battery all right so yeah the, we are going to turn these little half wore out. Like, this thing is totally shot. Like, it's just flopping in around there. It's a wonder the dang thing was even working. Like, I mean, that thing is really, really shot. It was getting pretty bad. This thing was wanting to upshift and into overdrive and lock the converter up, like, way too soon. And now with the exhaust on there, it just made it even worse because it just this got off of bogging. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually hook the scanner up to this thing real quick and give you guys a quick visual as to what I was talking about on what you're looking for when diagnosing a TPS sensor. Alright guys, so in my particular application, this is the part number we used. If you'll notice that the ACD is your AC Delco number, the 2134668, and then the actual GM OEM number for this is 888-64359. I like going with AC Delco stuff. They're an OEM supplier for GM and have been for years. And I like to go with their professional grade or their professional, yeah, grade stuff. So um, when you're online, like I've said before, with AC Delco stuff, there's two different lines of stuff. You'll see two and it'll be like, like if you're on Amazon, for example, like, wait, this AC Delco one's cheaper. Be careful because if it's their cheaper line, uh, the internals are cheaper qualities. I mean, you get what you pay for. So, and it's only a couple of dollars difference on these TPS sensors, man. This thing can give you so much headache if you get a cheap part, like a lot of things in automotive. Spend the extra couple bucks, get the professional level one, um, or, you know, when you're coming to these, like with GM or something, normally a good Delco or like a Delphi or something like that, or Denso is normally really good to go with. These cheap, you know, knockoffs that you buy and stuff like that, man, you're just asking for trouble. So, let's get at it. Alright guys, don't judge me, this is my daily beater, so 
yes, it's a little dirty because I just don't have the time to clean this thing right now. So that being said, uh, how a, like if you guys go buy you like a little code reader or something like that, this might help you too. Since 1996, federal mandated OBD2, Onboard Diagnostics Series 2. That's when everything came together because before that, everybody had their own freaking individual connector. I've got like 30 something different connectors in there to connect to older vehicles. But anyways, one of the few times that the federal government was actually did something decent. Um, yeah, I said it. Um, they actually kind of combined all of this and, and, and formed it into one. It made it really nice. Anyways, it's a what 14 or 16 pin. Hell, I can't remember. You guys can count them. Um, but they're all this kind of shape. And this is carried on until recent days. OBD3 or CAN bus systems all still use the same connector. And it's gonna be uh, under the driver's side of the dash somewhere in the footwell uh, is the stipulation uh, for, you know, they mandated. So mine is actually right under here. You'll actually see the connector under there. And we're just gonna plug it right on in. So. If you got one of those cute little code readers or something, or you know, maybe got one for Christmas, uh, your wife's awesome, you know, bought you a little scan tool or something. That's how it hooks up, that's all it takes. I'm using my OTC Evolve right now, because um, I don't feel like waiting on my Snap-on Veris to boot up, so this thing's a little quicker, and for what we're doing, this will work perfect. All right guys, so once you got your scan tool hooked up, of course you wanna make sure your key is in the on position. For what we're doing, we don't need the engine running or anything like that. Um, now we're going to go in here and um, most scan tools will make you select your vehicle. I can't remember if auto ID works on this one. This one's a bit older. Most of the 09 and up stuff will work, but I'm going to go here to recent vehicles because I'm pretty sure I've had this thing hooked up before. Doo 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 doo. I, yep, there we go. It was in there somewhere. All right, uh, so we want to go to data stream. We want to see, let's get into the PCM. And and by the way, guys, these are all the different computers on this vehicle. Um, and you know, some of your newer vehicles might have anywhere from up to 30 something computers. They'll have like an individual computer for the door and all this kind of stuff. Like it's a whole network, like a whole office of computers on one network. Um, in your vehicle it's crazy what goes on nowadays so what we're going to look for here is i'm going to find the throttle position so let's see if i can find that in here cue the jeopardy music so let's see all right i'll just come in here do, 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 do. You want to throw it a position indicated angle and give it a cute name. Let's see if we can. Oh, I just. Okay, I want. Customize it. Alright. Let's make changes to a graph. That's right. Bingo. There we go. All right, guys. So this is what I'm talking about here. Right now, we're clearly... My foot's off the throttle, so we're at 0%. Um, what I'm going to do now is ease down on the throttle all the way to full throttle in a nice sweeping motion. So we should have a nice rise with no glitches or dropouts. And just like that. Yep. So your, your suite might look different, you know, depending on if the engine's running, the refresh rate of your scan tool and all that. But that's what we're looking for. A nice straight line, no dropouts, any little erratic dropout in there. If you, if your foot didn't twitch or, you know, or back up, um, then you've probably still got a bad TPS sensor. Like, especially if you bought a cheap one, you could have that issue. So, but that looks way better. Um, I probably, I should have, Took some video of you guys uh, for you guys with the old one, but it was it wasn't that pretty. It randomly had its own little dropouts, and seeing how bad that thing is doesn't surprise me now. So, but uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, yeah, I'll show you a quick little tutorial of you know what it looks like on our side here with the scan tool. So, hopefully, it'll help you guys out, especially if you got a little scan tool for Christmas or your birthday or something like that. Somebody did buy you that; they're pretty freaking awesome. You should uh, you should definitely thank those people.
All right, guys, that's a wrap on another How To with Mike. Uh, today, we're, you know, we're teaching you on how to do a TPS sensor. Hope you guys learned something. You got any questions or comments or whatever, feel free to leave them below. Don't forget to give us a like and subscribe. It really helps a lot. We love doing anything for you guys, and the feedback's great. You guys subscribe and like it in the comments. We love every bit of it, good or bad, man. We'll take it with it. So that being said, man, if you knock one of these out, congratulations. I'm proud of you. Um, if you've been thinking about it, I think you can do it. I got faith in you guys. And uh, don't forget, you know, time for a good cold Dr. Pepper, just like the doctor ordered. And also, stock is not an option.